Hey, wanna, you want a hug? You want a hug? I do. Okay. I want a Republican hug. <laughs> a Republican. An Uncle Sam hug. Time for another edition of Change My Mind, where we sit down for hopefully productive conversations on controversial topics and uh, hear from you in the comments section. Now, sometimes it's hard to find voices of opposition willing to engage in conversation, so this week we reserved a booth at the Texas State Democratic Convention. And that sets the stage for this edition's premise, America is superior to all of the countries. Change my mind. We also saw some familiar faces who became friends, and they might surprise you. Hey, Danielle, how are you? Good to see you, Danielle. Is, uh, that's, uh, he's got it. I don't, I don't look as, as polished as you. I'll give you that right away. I've already had my chance at your table. That's... I'm going to give others a chance to see I appreciate you. it. Glad to see you, Danielle. Now, for this topic, th this isn't just lip service. I genuinely believe the United States to be the greatest country on earth. What you're about to see are three people who tried to change my mind. What was your name? Marilyn Mays. Marilyn Mays. Yeah. Stephen Crowder, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Stephen. So uh, I just I just want to make sure that, just to recap here, I said I believe the United States is still the greatest country in the world, superior to all other countries, in my opinion. You're welcome to change my mind. And, and you said last week, maybe, but this week, an all-time low. What, what do you mean? This week, last, last week, and even this week, we're at an all-time low. Okay. You know, I'm just so exhausted over these children, these toddlers being taken. Yeah. And I need you to help me understand why we would take babies and toddlers. Because in the work I do, it looks to me like since the Russians won't give us babies, they're going to take the little children that just came here and adopt them out. S since the who won't give us babies? Russians. You know, they, oh. the deal fell through in Trump Tower. Uh. <laughs> That's what you think it's about. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let me ask this before we get, because you're obviously aware of uh, Trump's exec Trump's executive order now. I am. Okay, so now they're not going to be separated. They're going to be detained together. So is that progress? As of this morning, they still are. Well, yeah, it because takes a while, but yeah, well, are you happier about that? I, I was I was really happy about it, and then when I saw the loopholes, the loophole that right after, you know, that that last paragraph at the very end, not paragraph, the last phrase, at the mm -hmm. very end, and I went, same stuff, different day. Yeah. I'm and then Melania's jacket. Yeah. Well, let me Come ask on, you, though. Man. Hold on a second. So this has been a week that obviously you disagree with some, you know, the Obama oh, and Clinton yes. policies, uh, the Flores to yeah. consent policy. So your problem isn't with Trump, it's with the Clintons and Obamas. But um, let me ask you this. Does that change? Do you disagree with the premise that the United States is the greatest country in the world, that it's superior to all other countries? Or is it just that you're a little worn down from the news week? I think we're falling in statue. I think that, I mean, we, we've been falling. I've been upset since G7, okay? I've been falling apart since G7. Because how would we do our allies like that? This man is just dismantling America, the respect that we have. I can remember last year and the year before going on cruises. And Pete just be having to apologize mm. for this country. I've never had to apologize for my country. I'm a veteran. I don't understand. Well, thank you for your that. service. And you know, it's like I'm up here having to apologize. For what? Because people say, for Trump? How so? Because he's a humiliation, he's an embarrassment. He doesn't know the king's English. Okay. He cannot hold a decent conversation. I don't believe he went to Warden School of Business. Hmm. I think somebody else took his test. He is ignorant. Because you know, okay. a lot of people would send folk to take their test back in the day. Yeah, okay? I had a guy who actually, he would do that when he would weigh in for wrestling practice. He uh -huh. had a twin brother, and they would weigh, he would weigh, his brother would weigh in. But let me ask you, I, I get that you're not a fan of Donald Trump, and there are a lot of things that I'm not a fan of his either, but pro I probably support more policies of his than, than you do, but not all of them. Um, but again, I want to go back to the premise today is the United States is the greatest country in the world. Uh, what do you apologize to people for? How do you believe we're inferior to other countries? Or what country do you believe is better than the United States? Um, I feel like, like Great Britain and France and Canada, mm. I feel like those countries are making us, I mean, are taking the high road. And I feel like everything I believed in is slipping away from me. Mm. And I've just been distraught these past two weeks but everything I believed in, when I first fell apart, is the night when I realized about 8 o'clock that evening that Trump was going to win. And I thought, okay, 
I'm going to work with him, you know, because he's my commander in chief. I'm going to try to get with him. I appreciate that. But then he just kept being more and more ignorant. May, may I stop you for a moment? Yes. Really quickly, sorry. I don't want to interrupt, but I want to make sure that we, this yeah. thing keeps falling off. If oh, you see it fall. Your, don't let your stuff fall. I know. This is, you don't want to see what's under here. No, we don't want to No jawline. Um, so you mentioned Canada, Britain, and France. So you believe they're better than the United States. Let me ask you this. You said everything you believe in is disappearing. Uh, you're a veteran. Yes. Um, did you serve to protect freedom of speech? I did. So what about the fact that those countries don't have freedom of speech? Only the United States does. But you know what? That's not what I see right now. You know, you only you only get caught up in what you see. No, 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 no. Here's because the thing: it doesn't matter what you I see was, as far as when I was there. Well, no, but I we we have it consti constitutionally enshrined here yeah. in Canada, the UK, yeah. France. People are jailed for speech for offensive things okay. or fined. That doesn't happen in the United States. We have a constitutional right to freedom of speech. They don't. So, wouldn't you say that the United States, is certainly as a veteran, if you were serving to protect freedom of speech? is superior to those countries, if only because we're the only country with freedom of speech. But it, why I'm so distraught, it looks like we're getting ready to lose it. I mean, anyway, he's playing footsie with, with, uh, with, with Kim and Putin and, you know, applauding Kim for wiping out three generals the day before he came and, you know, his people sit up. You know, when I see that, I get nervous because it looks like if nobody puts that dude in check, we're going to lose everything. And it's just, I'm just sad. Well, I understand that you're sad. And I'm sorry, I don't want to see anyone sad that you're feeling this way. I'm sad. But I'm, I'm hearing a lot of how you feel, but I don't think that's really objective reality. Freedom of speech is actually not being eroded here I, like you it is. Not? No, not unless the left, unless the Democrats would have their way. They support hate speech laws. Republicans are the ones who've defended against it. On campus, they're the ones banning I points can't of view. Because yeah. the, the kind of. Well, you might need to read some, might need to put some uh, conservative sites in your bookmark so you can read both sides because I'm an ardent defender of freedom of speech. And uh, as a matter of fact, I've had people who try to silence me, people here who, for, I feel like we've had a good conversation, yeah. people here at this very, uh, this very convention who threatened to firebomb me, slash my tires, just Why for me speaking up. That? Because they're liberals. I'm a liberal. I would never do that to you. Well, then take it up with them. I would never do that to you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, See, I mean, we're more closer friends than me and them. We are. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like everybody has a right to say what they want to say. But it's like when you start being offensive and hurting people, you know, that's when I start getting nervous. But but it's still protected. It's that's still, prote why, that's it's why, still protected. Just not in the countries you it's mentioned. It's still protected. And so it's like... It's like everything I believed in is slipping away. But does that, would you say that this is some progress in our conversation? It seems to me, and I'm not suggesting at all that you're ignorant. I'm Canadian, well, so I'm very aware of Canadian. Though. No, but the point is, you suggested these other countries, it doesn't seem like you were totally aware that they don't have freedom of speech. I wasn't. So does that change your opinion? No. You'd want to live in a, a you think a country with no freedom of speech is superior to the United States? See, I, that would be where just where we disagree. I think they're inferior yeah. with no freedom of speech. I just think that... We have a pig for a president, and he's making us look bad all over the world. He's ignorant, and I just wish that he would, you know, I know he is who he is, and he deserves to be who he is, mm. but it just is so, uh, everything that I thought of that a president ought to be, he's not. And he's so rude and crude around the edges, and he's. It's well, I'll tell you what. And I say this respectfully because I still respect him as a president. I do. But for me, I mean, I felt that way about President Barack Obama. I felt as though you didn't think he was born in wherever that was Trump lied about, did you? What was that? No, I don't think he was okay. born in Kenya. No, 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 no. Uh, I just think he was a terrible president. But I respect the That's office, you. and I, th That's I respect you. that you feel well, that way. He knew the King's English, and he knew the law. This dude don't know nothing. I mean, he's. I don't even think he's a good businessman because well, well, he we filed have, bankruptcy. We have Seven records. Seven low unemployment, times. record high job participation. That's very nice. We're but doing what very wages? well. What are wages? They're doing really well. We have the yeah. highest. As a matter of fact, do you are you surprised to learn that the United States has the highest wages in the world? An average I'm income? I'm not surprised about that. Okay. So that's I'm a good thing. I'm not surprised about that. And that's a very good thing. And I'm happy about that. But my thing is, okay, Trump, you didn't marry American. Trump, you didn't, um, um, you've got all those immigrants working for you mm -hmm. most of the people that work for trump yeah but there, there's a difference between legal and illegal immigrants but i know it but what about americans i mean you you so pro-american let's let's see americans with most of these jobs and i know it's all these jobs that americans don't want to do i i know that i get that okay. but it's just that well, i'm I, just i appreciate you taking that i'm sorry to see you sad I'm i was sad. can i give you one piece of advice 
don't yeah. place so much so much uh, credence in one man. You know what I mean? You're you're responsible for your own happiness. It's not oh, the state. No. It's not the government. Do you have but a family? You just destroyed everything that I. But do you have a family? Was. I love my folks. Do you yeah. have a good family? Yes. Focus on your family and focus on your health. I do think, even though I didn't like Barack Obama. I did notice a lot of people on the right were so miserable and they thought everything was over. Listen, it's one man. We have safeguards in this country. It's one man and the Freedom Caucus. But it's my like, point is, so you can still hate. choose to be happy. I don't, I don't hate you. I don't hate you. And I'm a conservative Republican. And I'm very happy to meet somebody like you. And some of my good friends are Republicans, you know? Yeah. And we agree to disagree. It's just that this was a bad two weeks. Yeah, I can understand how it would be rough just, for you. You know, babies, you know, the work I do, I represent children as their guardian. Mm -hmm. And I see what it does when you move a child. And I know the parents are at fault for bringing them here. And I know that people don't want to invest. And Clinton for signing the policy and yeah. Obama then for doubling back and not exactly. enforcing it. Exactly. And so I realized that if you got to pay to play in the world. And sometimes you got to invest money in these other countries to keep them at home. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a problem, okay? That's the first thing I learned in political science, that sometimes you got to pay to play. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to invest in keeping those folk at home, and that's another monster, because if we get off into that, our soldiers get killed, and it's another big old mess. So I'm just saying. Well, I'm sorry. Well, thank you for taking hey, want You want a hug? You want a hug for I us? I do. I want a Republican hug. Yeah, right. <laughs> a Republican. An Uncle Sam hug. Well, thank I'm you so much for taking that. I speak well of well, I must be well uh, me, that's okay. Hey, listen, I get it. There are a lot of Republicans who are jerks, but I appreciate you taking the time. Well, you're a good Republican. I'm, I'm pleased to I'm have conservative. You. Libertarian conservative. Okay. Yeah. All so right. if you see someone trying to firebomb this booth, tell them to stop. I'm going to tell them, don't do it, because you're a reasonable man. Thank okay? you very much. I appreciate it. I don't it. believe you've lied about anything. I try and not Trump to. Trump is a liar. My God. Well, I think Why that's politi lying? politicians in general. I know, but don't, not every other word. Come on, man. Help me with that. I pray for I him. I can't. I even pray for him. I appreciate that. I pray for him every day. You know what? I pray and for I him, and I pray for like Barack me. Obama as well. I think I we share a lot of him. common ground. I don't want him to be like me. I, I pray for him to be who he is. But he's just so destructive in my eyes. And I realized that we were we were raised under different circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, we come from a different world. But I just Okay. I just well, thank wish you. he could be more like Jeb Bush. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I don't think Jeb Bush wishes he could be more I like know. Jeb Bush. He's such a wiener. But I all right, well thank you. I mean, my my Republican didn't win. Okay. Yeah. And I but that's not why I'm upset, you know. Right. My Republican you. didn't win. Well, so. thank you. I don't want to keep you all down. We have to keep the chair for other people. Oh, but thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you for being a good conservative. Thank you very much. Thank you for being so pleasant and respectful. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. So is this yours or is this, is this ours? This is ours? I hope that's yours. Okay, it's ours. Thank you. Apologies. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye. Bye. That was great. What was your name, by the way? Diane Mott. I'm Stephen. Hi, nice Stephen. Nice to meet you, I hope you are a Democrat. I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh. I'm a, I'm a Canadian-American dual citizen conservative libertarian, to be specific. Yeah. This country has just gone down the drain. How so? Well, look what's happening. Donald Trump is the most despicable... I don't even have words or adjectives to describe this man and to see what he's done. And, Knowing what I came from mm -hmm. and how I saw my country deteriorate under corrupt African rule, which it did, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no getting away from it. Oh, no, so I understand. Africans are leaving in their droves. It's, st it's still terrible droves. today with their, their laws and the farmers. Doing, what they're doing to the farmers. And, um, you know, I see it's not only so much the farmers. It's just the whole infrastructure of the country has disintegrated. And my family all live there. Sure. I've lived here for 20 years. And I've had reasonable opportunities. You know, my daughter's been able to go to college, which she would have done in South Africa anyhow. Um, I cannot begin to tell you how angry I am with white, spineless Republicans who are, are not even looking at the other side of the slate and are now well, that's why I'm here condoning what this man is doing condoning it I mean who tears children apart well f first off I, do you disagree with the fundamental fundamental premise that the United States is the best country in the world no. 
You don't disagree with that? I, I, I disagree with it, yes. Okay, so what examples of countries would you say are superior to the United States? I guess to start, before we get to how much you dislike Trump, and I understand Korea. that. Korea, they've got an incredible... South Korea? South Korea, they've got an incredible standard of education, mm -hmm. the highest in the world. We don't have a very... We have a, one of the lowest standards of education. We don't have a, we don't have a great public education no, system, I agree. Terrible, terrible. You got one, one moment? One moment? Hey, Jared? Let me know. You need to be the one to let me know. When she, okay, sorry. And okay, so South Korea. Okay. That's, that's one issue, is education. The other, the other thing that I feel very, very uh, angry about at the moment, but I, it's been there always in this country, there's a lot of hatred and divisiveness that Trump literally scratched the surface of. Mm. It's always been there because I've felt it as an immigrant. Mm. People have told me to go back to South Africa if I yeah. didn't like it here. So it's not the greatest country in the world. Well, those are individual examples. They're anecdotal. People being rude. I but mean, my mom's French Canadian. Yes. I was. Ra I'm Canadian. Was raised in Canada. My whole life's a dual citizen. Uh, I, that doesn't change the empirical data. The evidence, as far as now, let me let, let me let me sort of present. Back, let me present why I think it's the greatest country in the world. Things, yes. Is that uh, you know freedom, equal opportunity, the ability to pursue happiness. Equal opportunity. And in uh, in South Korea, do they have do they have freedom? What's free speech like in South Korea? They're allowed to speak freely. And what about Europe? Europe, a, a country like Holland, I've lived in a lot of places. Freedom of speech doesn't exist in those countries. In Holland? It is not constitutionally enshrined. Maybe there are hate speech laws where you can be jailed or fined for saying something offensive. In well, every country you've mentioned, they do not have freedom of speech. Do you think hate speech crimes are actually acceptable? I think that freedom of speech, the First Amendment, is to defend precisely offensive but speech. It's not happening here now. What's not happening here now? Because we are not allowed to speak out, and we're attacked, and the, uh, the press is attacked for being fake news. Mm -hmm. So is that is that total freedom of speech? No, it's not. Sure. I'm talking about people being fined or put in jail by the government for speaking well, out it, offensively. It could, it could get to that point. It could get but we, to that but point. But we aren't, and they are at those other countries you've mentioned. Well, is that not important? It, I don't think that happened. It doesn't happen in South Africa. It certainly doesn't happen in South Africa. You can say what you like now, and it's actually totally acceptable. So in South Africa, freedom of speech is a constitutionally Absolutely. enshrined right. Yes, yes. Yep. It has it's certainly it's not. been... How do you know? It's not a constitutionally enshrined right in Maybe South Africa. Maybe we don't have a constitution that follows what the American constitution does, but basically people can speak out. I worked in the I'm not State talking Department. about basically. I'm talking in Canada, basically people could speak out until they started saying the wrong thing. And here's the thing. I want you to be able to speak out and say whatever you want about President Trump. Not I think I absolutely, well, I whatever you want to say, my point is I would protect your country. right to say anything. Yes. And so these yes. other countries that you named, they don't have the same constitutional freedoms that we have. But is our constitution such a great constitution? Yes. I'm glad you think so. Oh, well, if, if you don't the think so. The Second Amendment, I think, is the most archaic and the most ridiculous part of a constitution that went back to the 18th, 17th century. What are gun laws like in South Africa? Very strict. And you know and No why? gun crime, right? Very little compared to what's going on here. Very little. Very little crime there's in no, South Africa no, compared to the United States? There's no mass shooting. People do not go into schools and kill students. It's never, never happened, okay? It may be one-on-one, -on -one, and it's happening, yes, with the farmers, but it's gangs. Cri it's gangs crime is far greater in South Africa, and you also can't protect oh, yourself no, against tyrannical not. governments. So no, I would actually not. argue that South Africa is a precise reason for the Second Amendment, so that we don't have a government like South Africa, as you just mentioned. But well, uh, you know, I appreciate you taking that. I don't think we're going to find a ton of common ground there if you don't like the Constitution, but no, it sounds to me like you might prefer these countries. I would. I actually am having second thoughts about, I've been here 20 years, and I'm having second thoughts about living here anymore. Oh, I, w I wouldn't discourage you from doing that. That's not me saying get out. That's no, me saying if you think that they're better know, countries exactly. and you're not a supporter of the First no, or Second Amendment, you might be happier in one of these other countries. No, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time. Now, your, your, your premise is America is superior to any other country. Yes, could you please okay, yeah, move, sure. your, move your chair Absolutely. in there. Yeah, so let me give you my premise. I believe, yeah, it's, okay, it's the best, best country in the world. Yeah, that's that's pretty simple. I believe it's the greatest country in the world. Okay. And uh, yeah, I know you said you, you thought you really changed my mind. Uh, well, I I don't think uh, the United States is is the best or greatest country in the world. Okay. I think there are uh, a lot of very good countries to live in, and I would mention the ones in Europe, uh, maybe Japan. I think Japan's a good country. Uh, Singapore is a good country. Mm -hmm. uh, Australia, Canada. 
Um, a lot of these are Anglo countries, obviously, yeah. because they all are the benefits, have the benefits of the British history. Sure. Now, let me get to specifics. Um, uh, our country is perhaps the most capitalist sure. or free enterprise country on the planet. Okay. And I think that's a major problem okay. um, for this reason. Uh, to survive, uh, free enterprise companies have to continue to grow. They're always competing. Sure. And if they, uh, if they, uh, if they don't grow, they will um, lose market share to other companies, mm -hmm. and they will um, uh, then. Um, <laughs> you came here so gung ho, saying you're going to change my mind. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm not, not doing I'm not, it very well, am I? I'm not I? interrupted you or anything. Okay, I'm no, you haven't. Sure you haven't. You haven't. Is there? There's no water in here for me. Sorry. You, well, you know, just because it's it's a it's a legal thing where if I give you water and then you go and say, oh, I feel faint. Okay, got yeah. it. Got so, it. So yeah. Okay, so. Uh, we have we have uh, a problem with that because uh, if, as they lose their business in competition, they will eventually go bankrupt, and that that company will then end, and uh, they will lose all the employees will lose their jobs okay. and have to fend for themselves. Now that's one problem. The other problem is that as the population of the Earth increases, which it has been doing, uh, corporations have to continue to grow to keep market share to keep it the steady market share because the, the market share is going up, population's increasing, so their consumers are increasing. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that happens, uh, they use more and more resources. Okay. And uh, a lot of resources are in short supply. And more and more resources will continue to, to uh, disappear. Do you, 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 you believe this is exclusive to the United States? Uh, no, but I think the United States is one of the worst offenders. Now, there's probably a worse offender, and that's China, right. in, that, in that respect. Yeah. They're using resources at an enormous rate. But you, you named some countries, you said in Europe, uh, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Canada. I, would you I, put that at the top of your list? I would put it even, at least even with the U.S., maybe better. I would just, European countries, Germany, France. So any Britain. countries that you would say are superior to the United States, since my premise um, is... Possibly superior, but at least equal. Equal. Okay. And if they're equal, that negates your proposition, which America is the greatest or the best. Okay. okay. Well, what's that? No? Okay. okay, sorry, my producer looking at me here. Um, do they have the same kinds of freedoms in those countries? Uh, yes, they, they are representative democracies, mm. uh, like our country. Uh, many people consider representative democracy to be the best sort What about of freedom system. of speech? Uh, yes, of course. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. Japan, Great Britain, Canada? Nope. nope. Are you sure about that? It is not How a constant. Scandinavia, Norway, Finland? Means many of these. By the way, I notice you're mentioning very homogenous countries, so not a big fan of diversity, uh, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, uh, that's true. They, they are... But, but no, they, let me cl clarify. Have, no. No, it's not a protected right in Canada, in Japan, certainly not in Europe. You can be jailed, fined, or many people are for saying something offensive. So to me, right away, before we get to the economics of it, right, we're the number one economy, we have the highest wage in the industrialized world. Before we get to that, number one I told you on my list was freedom. Freedom, equal opportunity, pursuit of happiness freedom of speech doesn't exist in any of those countries. And that's because that was a unique founding of our country. That's a big part of why I believe we're superior to those countries. Uh, I'm not sure I believe that. I think, absolutely I think true. Some of the, now, those countries don't have freedom of speech in a constitution, but they have laws protecting speech. No, they don't. People are jailed and fined all the time. In Canada, for example, we've had comedian Mike Ward on our show, who was put before Human Rights Tribunal for a, for a joke. Stephen Boisson, a pastor who was fined and jailed. You have a man who was jailed in the UK for doing a karaoke version of Kung Fu fighting. It was considered racist. You have Dank, uh, uh, Dank Dog, the pug, who was taught to do a Nazi salute as a, as a joke. There, the list goes on and on. And on. I feel like I'm giving you enough specifics. Not, not Nazi salutes and Nazi prop Nazis. A pug you know, did a little Nazi salute. Yeah, the pug. Yeah. Uh, anything with Count Dank Nazis is certainly banned in Germany and Austria, for instance. Yeah. I'm aware of this, that. This was in the UK. And that is a it, was, it was a man whose dog did the Nazi salute, which, let's admit, listen, I hate Nazis. That's kind of funny for a pug who did it while watching the show. So. <laughs> and this man was put before a trial. The point is freedom of speech doesn't exist in those countries. Does that change your opinion at all? Well, again, you're, you're making a statement that I'm not sure of. I, I don't... I, I, I know that in Germany and Austria, mm -hmm. uh, using anything, to, having anything to do with Nazis, such as insignia or songs, they can't sing the horse vessel song in Germany, right. for instance. Uh, so there are restrictions on speech in those countries, and that means uh, they're not as free as the U.S. 
where you, where you can go out and sing the horse vessel song if you want and right. things like that. Of course, I would never do that. No, I, I, would, I would never I do that, Nazis, but do you yeah. support their right to do it? Of course. Okay. That's if I didn't realize uh, other countries. What about blasphemy? Uh, we can be blasphemous in this country. Yes. Uh, isn't blasphemy legal in Britain and well, Canada? Honestly, I, would, uh, and I, have, I have no idea if blasphemy specifically is allowed. I know that it's actually a hate crime to speak out against the Quran and specifically oh, Muslims no, in Canada. I and that's a never, real I would never say they're better countries than the U.S. Oh, no? Oh, no. Well, then you, you can't change my mind then. I, I'm, I'm saying say Muslim countries. No, where, where I'm saying actually in, in many of these countries people are tried for hate crimes for speaking out against Islam. So that they do have blasphemy laws, I know, for that, for example. You mean in the countries I named? Yes. Canada, yes. Britain, Germany, France? Yes. I really don't think so. Okay, so let's, for the sake of exercise, right? Yeah. Let's say I'm not lying to you. After okay. we do this, you can, I actually have this, you can reference these if you want to. Um, and I've lived it. Uh, okay. Let's say that's true. Would that eliminate any of those countries from being superior to the United States? If they don't have freedom of speech, if they don't afford that singular uh, right to their that, citizens, that that would certainly diminish them, in my opinion, as far as freedom is concerned, because freedom of speech is obviously a, a big freedom that we Paramount. that we enjoyed in this country. We enjoy it in this yeah. country. I'm a conservative, yeah. but I, I absolutely support every. I, I, I hope everyone here speaks out as loudly, as proudly as they possibly can, yeah. and I don't even care if it's offensive. I don't care if it's rude. I believe it should uh, be protected. And I I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I um I'm a liberal, and I'm against. Um, uh, speech restrictions on some university campuses. Oh, thank I, you. I think yes. I know. I, I I'm a, when I was uh, a student at Michigan, University of Michigan. Oh, are you from Michigan? Well, no, okay. I'm not. I was bo born in Detroit, but raised in Montreal. But well, my, I, my dad went to U of M. Well, I went to Ann Arbor, and I um, I was uh, program chairman for our for my house oh. for for a year. And I one of the guys I got was a John Birch Society guy. Okay. And, and we, we, we treated him respectfully, and I, I did too. I thought everything he said was nonsense, but we listened. And I, I, Thank you. I don't mind that. I think people might be against that today, at, let's say, at Berkeley or some other universities. Yeah. That would be prohibited or something. So, yeah, I'm in, I'm for favor, uh, if I'm in favor of freedom of speech. And I, yeah. and I, I do agree that conservatives shouldn't uh, be restricted, yeah. as they often are. Oh. Now, um, and that includes, uh, let's say, white supremacists and racists. However, um, they, they should, and a lot of them have been denied speaking. Yeah. However, uh, they should be able to do that under, under, in a controlled condition where, where um, if, there's, if secur host, there's security. <laughs> if they want to host, I'm not a white supremacist or not, I, I want to make sure I you understand yeah, this. Yeah, I know that. Uh, okay, good. I we probably tipped up by me hugging the, uh, the, the black lady earlier. Um, <laughs> but uh, that being said, if they want to host their own private event and speak, yeah, yeah I, I, I think All they should right. have the right to do so, just like I okay. think someone should. Uh, but if, uh, yeah. if you say freedom of speech is more restricted in those countries I named, Canada, Britain, it's not Germany, a right. France, it is it's not, not a right. right, that would diminish them as far as best or equal oh. to the U.S. Look at that, we found some common ground. Can I get a high five? Yeah, high five. We both agree freedom of speech is important. However, uh, uh, there's other things. I mentioned the economic situation. I think these other countries have a better balance between uh, capitalism and socialism. Mm -hmm. You know, our country has a mixed economy. We have true. We have market, market free enterprise, but it's regulated. And we have sure. a, great, a great deal of social uh, programs. And... Um, like Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, uh, that balance is found in all these other countries too. They they also have free enterprise to a certain extent, but they also have the social programs. I think the U.S. is lesser than those countries because its social programs are not as good as, say, Great Britain and France and sure. Germany, which have better health care, for instance, in Canada. Incorrect. Uh, well, I, th I, th I really think they're better than our... Yes. Incorrect. Okay, well, say what you want. <laughs> I, well, I just I have to make sure that I understand. I, we disagree. Well, first off, at this point, you're now just saying in that facet they're superior with the social programs because we both agree they can have all the social programs. If they don't afford freedom of speech, they well, cannot be a better country. And I think um, I think these these countries are better in that regard. In that than they, just than in that US. regard, yes. Okay. In that regard, yes. You're right. And I would I would say that's a pretty significant difference. Well, I would disagree. Okay. So uh, the, the only, as a matter of fact, the standard when people say that socialized health care is better, it comes to a subjective poll when people are asked if they're satisfied with their health care. That's how Michael Moore said Cuban health care was better than American health care. Remember in sicko? Everyone was parroting that for years. I, I remember Canadian that. health care, 
Europe. You look at the mortality rates, they're much higher. It's, it's, you look at the is. wait times, they're much higher. Uh, of course, not to mention we have the highest wage in the industrialized world outside of Luxembourg, a country of 600,000 people. Um, so we have higher wages, I, I we would have higher standards of living. I would disagree with that. We do. Uh, a lot of European countries have, have good wages on average for their people. The most Statistically, the United States countries. has the highest wage in the world outside of Luxembourg. Per capita? Mm -hmm. Per capita, highest wage? Highest wage. Okay. Number one economy, highest wage. And here's something else to consider, right? I'm from Canada, right? I was raised in Canada. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, if the United States wanted to take over Canada, what time is it right now? Do you, you have a watch on a yeah, watch. I do. What time is it? It's 3:12. Uh, 3:12. By 4:12, they could take Canada, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But we agree on that. Yeah. They couldn't. You know, it's, we have, we have a few guys wanted, in propeller plane. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, and and I, I love Canada for a lot of a, a lot of different reasons, but certainly I would not say it's uh, anywhere near the equal of the United States. Um, in and, what uh, healthcare? In all facets, but no, that that no. one too as well. But hold on one second. Let me let me finish what I'm saying. Um, let's change one thing. Canada, you have to protect your own borders. Go. Europe, go. Sweden, go. The United States foots the bill. You can look at what's paid into NATO. So not only do we have better, when you look at objective parameters for healthcare, and I'll get to that again in a second, specifically with Canada, but we also innovate more. There's more medical research here. There's more clinical trials, more drugs coming out of here than anywhere in the world, not to mention we provide national security for the entire industrialized free world. If you, you remove that, all of a sudden, people can't have the same kind of okay. social welfare programs. Okay. Now. Uh, on, on scientific research, the amount our government spends on scientific research has been decreasing over the years. And, con and the contrary to that, the, the amount there's spent more in, in the private. I'm talking about in this country. private space. We do more in the private space, not only the government space, but more in the private space than any of these other countries. It's not even close. Well, I can't disagree with that. Right, and that's a good thing, right? It benefits those countries. Yeah, we do do more private research. Right. Well, it benefits. Which subsidizes it benefits their socialized the, the companies mostly. And there's a secondary benefit to the population of the United States for jobs because it creates jobs. Right. Yeah, yeah but that, they wouldn't be able to have socialized health care if not for us innovating and creating modern medicine. Now, and then as far as, so you take that, you go, oh, well, okay, I'm starting to see a little bit of a different picture. The wages are lower, for example, in Canada overall. Uh, highest marginal tax rate in my province of Quebec, I think, is about 52%. Um, and it was actually, wait times were so bad. In Canada, in Quebec, there's a Supreme Court case in 2006, I believe, Shoei versus Quebec, where it was a doctor actually taking cash to provide patients with care. And you weren't allowed to do that at the time. And he was put out of business. And the Supreme Court said it's a violation of human rights to not allow people to pay for privatized care in the face of death in these waiting lines. And now they allow privatized, uh, they allow privatized care in Canada. So they're going our way. They're actually allowing for more privatization oh, because so it's a disaster. They're allowing more privatization. Yeah, it was declared. It was a violation of but, human rights to force someone into socialized health care. And, and that's perfectly okay with me. Uh, I think that's an improvement. However, uh, as far as overall health care for all the population, uh, Canada and, and, and Great Britain and Germany and France are better uh, no. because we have great health care for the wealthy, for the upper middle class, even, even the lower middle class. But for working class and poor people, our health care system is really bad. It's still better than those so, countries you mentioned as far as survival rates, as far as uh, treatment so. of terminal illnesses. No, no, yes, it is. I think the statistics would disagree with you. They I've don't. Read, I've read statistics. People are happier. They have lower. They have ah. lower infant. They no. I'm not. That's just one idea. They have lower infant mortality. They have. No, they don't. Uh, they have better health statistics in terms of cholesterol, things like that, than our country. Uh, so their health care system is working better, and in, in that regard, also they have better uh, social security systems. Ours is you know, just you're just hanging on. In those other countries, the European countries, Japan, Great Britain, Canada, they. They uh, have a better, what you what you call the social goal. safety net. Social safety net, yeah. Social safety net, yeah. Again, they have a lot more free money to spend when we foot the bill for security. The United States didn't okay. foot the bill security um, wise. But that being said, for the, the objective that is parameters, true. that is true. Okay. We we pay, we you know our our military. What is it? We pay more for for defense than the top 15 other countries combined. Yeah, we contribute more to NATO than anyone else. It's not that's, even close. That, that's true, too. They're not upholding their end of the bargain. So if, if uh, I know, I agree with that. I agree with that. They're not paying the percentage of their GDP that they should. Mm -hmm. Some are moving up now to that. They're spending it on Trump social has, safety nets. Trump has, has uh, started to threaten them. Isn't that a good thing? Well, uh, I Don't thought... Don't you want to reduce the military-industrial complex and force everyone else to be able to protect I, themselves? I think they should be paying their share. Okay, I'm, good. I'm, I'm aware of that. You're a very reasonable person. I appreciate it, even though we disagree. Well, this well, is well, I think we agree on a lot of specifics. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just worried about your major premise. But it seems like we agree with the country. premise. I, no. I think uh, if I was a German 
I think a German would say my country is just as good as the U.S. Or but they'd be wrong. For, and he'd, he'd have the reasons, and, and a Canadian would have the reasons. Uh, I really, I really think so. I don't think they have any reasons. And to go back to the one thing, healthcare, as you mentioned. By the way, I will agree well, with you. Well, you're Social Security dogmatic. is a disaster. You're awfully dogmatic. No, I'm not, I'm not. Social Security is a disaster. You know, like Medicare, Medicaid. I would agree with you. Our social programs here are not very good. Uh, and I, I also don't think they're very good in Canada. Uh, I don't think they're good across the board. I don't think they're ever well, as good as privatized care. You agree with me about care. that. Yes. Anyway, yeah. well, but you mentioned them as sort of a blended economy. You mentioned Medicare, Social Security, and I would say those are examples of abysmal failures, which we agree with. They're not very good. Um, as far as, you know, health care, again, this is very interesting. You said people are happier. Well, people were happier in Cuba with their health care than the United States. That doesn't mean it's better health care. People I, were happier in Venezuela four years they, ago. I didn't think they knew the alternative. That's the point. There we go. The alternative is far they, better they here. They were subjected to censor, censorship of information, mm -hmm. press censorship. Educational censorship. I hate, I hate to cut this short, but I actually do have to go to an event here okay. coming up. Thank, what was your name again, sir? Uh, Steven. Steven. I'm Steven as well. Steven Crowder. Thank okay. you so much, Steven. Well, hey, I, re I really hope you fellows this was productive and a okay. good you. civil discussion. I really enjoyed your company. Okay. Thank you, Steven. You're hey there, YouTube viewers. If you like this video, watch another one of our videos or subscribe, hit the notification bell. Those don't really mean anything anymore today in YouTube. I would say hit a like with a thumbs up, but that might be gone, or comment below, but that most likely will be censored. So bookmark the page. Of course, if you're using Google Chrome, they'll find a way to fuck with your bookmark. So just join up at lottowithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's lottowithcrowder.com slash mug club. You get a hand etched mug and you get access to the full daily one hour show and you're not beholden to Susan Wojcicki slash Clint Howard.